Hi friends, Pastor Chris here. I am the Associate Pastor at West Lawn United Methodist Church. And again, I want to say thank you for joining us in these daily devotional videos that Pastor Jeff and I have been producing for oh, well over six months now. Uh, we want to just thank you for, for continuing to, to, to daily worship with us uh, in these videos. And today is our second installment of the Sermon on the Mount, which comes from the Gospel according to Matthew. Uh, three chapters, five, six, and seven. And so today's second installment is the second of the nine Beatitudes that Jesus was teaching, was telling to his disciples there on the mountainside. And that is, blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. Now, this is one of those neat passages of scripture, much like a lot of scripture, that has a multitude of ways of being interpreted. Uh, I've come across primarily two schools of thought for this passage, and like most passages, like a lot of passages in scripture, uh, it's not black or white. It doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, it can be a both. And for me, this is one of them, and maybe it is for you as well, but I encourage you to think about that. Uh, so when I hear this, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted, my immediate mind, uh, my first knee-jerk reaction to the interpretation is mourning because we're grieving uh, the loss, uh, the death um, of a loved one or a family member or, or just a loss of life in general. You know, we mourn for a variety of reasons. So then we look at the word blessed, like, how can we be blessed? And that's more than just happiness. And when it's used in the, in the Greek form here uh, from Matthew, it's this enviable, uh, this fortunate state um, of being in this state. That's what it means to be blessed, a fortunate or enviable state. So we are fortunate or enviable because we are mourning. Um, but th God is telling us, Jesus is telling us that these are the traits and these beatitudes that uh, God desires for his kingdom. So blessed are those who mourn. Um, but so when I think of that then, and I hear that, I think of Jesus and weeping. Uh, John eleven thirty five, 35, New King James Version, shortest passage in the scriptures. Uh, Jesus wept. Uh, that's only the New King James Version. Uh, some of them are three or four, four words in length, but that's for your Bible trivia night. But anywho, so to grieve though is to know how to love. Uh, to know the love that was lost. I think that's a poem I remember from high school. Uh, but when we're grieving, that means we have a heart. We can feel. We are empathetic. We love people, uh, those that we may never even know. We can have love for them. Uh, but then we can mourn because we have uh, the heart of Christ in us. And to experience loss uh, makes us mourn. But then how are we comforted? Well, I think of Jesus as the great comforter. Uh, we've heard that said before. That's one of Jesus's titles. And I like when Paul writes in, in his letter to the Corinthians, the second letter, uh, he writes, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them that same comfort God has given us. So Jesus comforts us. He teaches us how to be comforted, but then we can also be Jesus for someone else, just as somebody else was Jesus for us and comforting us. Another way I like to, to interpret this, uh, to be comforted, is, is Jesus working through us to remind us to share the stories of loved ones, of the departed, um, to keep their memory going, to their legacy, the imprint, the impression they have endowed forever upon our lives um, because they are a saint, they are a child of God, and they have given so much to us, whether that was our parents or our spouse or a loved one or whomever, a, a good friend. Um, the image of God uh, has been shared on them and, and shown to us. So that's, that's one interpretation, grieving the loss of others. Now, the other school of thought is uh, we mourn because of the sin that exists in the world, both our personal sin, you know, our own sin that we commit, but also the corporate sin of the world, um, the fallenness and the brokenness of the world that we are born into. So Jesus is saying, yes, as Christians, as disciples, as followers of Christ, we mourn because sin exists in the world, that we are sinners and that we are lost. Um, we mourn because why do bad things continue to happen? Why 
Uh, does, a, does a loss of life continue to happen? Why do all the isms of the world exist in the world? And that is, you know, uh, racism, um, homophobia, uh, sexism, whatever ism, um, xenophobia. There are, you know, many things, the, the hatred that exists in the world that leads to, to sin. Um, just the things that lead us astray from God, both as individuals and as a society and as uh, a people, um, as children of God. So we mourn for that. And again, it is God who comforts us um, and that Jesus will come and he will reconcile the world uh, one way or the other, the, the sheep and the lambs and the goats will be separated. Um, James 4, 7 through 10 so humble yourselves before God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter, and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up in honor." Not exactly the most joyful passage, but it speaks the truth that sin exists in the world. And even as we are called Christians, even if we have professed Jesus as our Lord and Savior, sin still exists in our world. We are still striving to be more Christ-like. We are still in need of that mercy and forgiveness every single day. Even myself as a pastor and even you that are watching this. So we mourn for the sin and we also mourn for the loss of life. So which is it? I say it's both. But either way, Jesus says, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Friends, thanks for tuning in and may God be with you until we meet again.